Gojo and Ghetto are some of the best characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. Individually, these two are really interesting characters that function to show two very different ends of the spectrum when it comes to the mindset of a sorcerer. Both wanted to enact change, both wanted to make the world a better place, and at one point both characters had the other's outlook on the world, but the way they went about it and the journeys that they took to enact that very change couldn't be more different. On their own, they are great, but Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2's adaptation of Hidden Inventory has only reinforced the idea that together is when these two characters are at their best. So in this video, I wanted to talk about Gojo, I wanted to talk about Ghetto, and them specifically as a duo together in order to explain why their dynamic works so well. The first part of the Gojo and Ghetto equation that I really enjoy is the chemistry between the two. Now, when I say chemistry, specifically with these two, I'm not really referring to that in a romantic sense. Rather, I am saying that these two characters function really well together in a room. Gojo and Ghetto's personalities differ and overlap in a myriad of ways that allows for them to have an interesting on-screen dynamic. Their specific character traits and relation to one another changes as the story progresses, but even as enemies, I think the two have a painful but entertaining back and forth. Take this interaction in Volume 0, for example. Even while dying, Ghetto's playful attitude shines through after hearing Gojo's very heartfelt last words to his friend. It's an extremely somber scene, but Ghetto keeps the moment from getting too down while also being extremely sincere in his own goofy way. The chemistry between the two only becomes more obvious when you go back to their teenage days. As you'll see in Hidden Inventory, Gojo and Ghetto talking is just really funny. In both the anime and manga, Gojo and Ghetto's clowning of Udahime is funny and works to explore their personalities at this point in their lives as well. In just a few lines of dialogue, we see that Gojo is a very upfront person with his feelings and thoughts. This is a trait that we know he has as an adult, but as a teenager, it's even more prominent, with his directness being to the point of straight up annoyance. He mentions this later in the same episode and chapter, but Gojo has no desire to protect the weak, nor does he really have the desire to respect anyone that he doesn't deem strong. As someone who looks at himself as a powerful person, it just seems like a hassle for him. Ghetto pretty strongly opposes this idea and thinks that those who are strong should help those who are weak. But in spite of his rather mature philosophy, he is prone to be provoked or overlook things in this department. He is still a kid at the end of the day, and you can see these small oversights happen every once in a while. He accidentally provokes Udahime by calling out Gojo for being mean to weak people, and when Riko makes fun of him for his appearance, he drops right down to Gojo's level as they both jokingly beat her up for it. None of this character work is out of this world, at least not on a basic level, but showing that Gojo and Ghetto have vast differences in mindsets while still both being realistically childish, goofy, and immature is a pretty serious contributor to their friendship making so much sense and really connecting with the audience. You can see their closeness on full display simply with how much they trust each other, and because of the strength and similar sense of humor that they share, it makes sense why they gravitate towards one another as friends. It's the differences and similarities meshing together harmoniously that create such a close bond between the two. Not only are they both goofballs, but they're strong goofballs who balance each other's weaknesses and strengths out really well. Well, the manga does a solid job of conveying this, but the anime goes above and beyond with really emphasizing everything about them that leads to them being such great friends. Their competitiveness shines through with their small exchange on the basketball court, their in-tune reactions of annoyance when Yaga forces them to work together, the way Ghetto tries to look out for Gojo in an almost older brother fashion, and even down to the lazy ways that both of them walk, really make it make sense on a fundamental level as to why Gojo and Ghetto are friends. Some manga don't take the time to really flesh out the inner workings of a dynamic like this. Some manga just tell you that two characters are close friends and leave it at that, but this just can't be said to be the case with these two. If you told me that Gege just based both of their personalities on two real life best friends that he observed, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. While very different from other relationships he writes, it still feels extremely potent and extremely real. Yuji and Megumi, for example, differ from Gojo and Ghetto, and they share a closeness between them, but it demonstrates itself in such a different way. Megami is very protective of Yuji, and Yuji defers to Megami because of his experience in the sorcerer field. It makes sense given the circumstances of their relationship, but with Gojo and Ghetto, it just feels like they share the same brain cell. 
Ghetto kinda attempts to take on the role of Megumi in their relationship at times, as you can see when he tries to correct Gojo's grammar, or generally speaking when he explains certain concepts to Gojo that he thinks he should know. But not only is he not as uptight as Megumi, but Gojo isn't as clueless as Yuji. So rather than the dynamic being a sort of dumb friend, smart friend scenario, it comes across like a dumb and dumber friend. Both of them have their moments of idiocy, but they're also significantly more knowledgeable at a base level than Yuji and Megumi, and they also have a general higher level of competence in the two relative to their respective threats. Now, when it comes to these two in chemistry, there's a pretty big elephant in the room, which I somewhat alluded to, but we'll fully dive into now, and that's the Gojo and Ghetto shippers. Now, shipping in general is just a big part of fan culture, and in most cases, I simply couldn't care less. Bakugo and Deku, Naruto and Sasuke, Megumi and Yuji, I'm honestly not bothered in the slightest by any of these things, and I don't think anyone should be, really. But when talking about why two characters are like so much, especially a duo like this, I do think it's somewhat helpful to at least note that the shipping community is a pretty large part of the general positivity surrounding the characters. Hating this ship or loving this ship aside, it's just a fact of the matter that a lot of people who like Gojo and Ghetto also like... Gojo and Ghetto together. These two together make probably one of the most popular ships in the series, just based on my own personal observations. And I think the fact that they are even written to a degree that allows people to think that they're romantically involved with one another speaks volumes to the quality of their dynamic and the closeness of the two. It's not the way I interpret their relationship, so I'm going to keep referring to what they had as a friendship, but I don't think it's completely absurd to read the story that way. And I think the writing behind them remains the same regardless. I say all that to say, one of the major reasons that these two characters work so well is because of their chemistry, romantic or otherwise. On top of what is just really good organic character interactions, Gege added a layer of childishness and slice of life vibes to Gojo and Ghetto, and really the first half of this arc overall. This is somewhat the case in the manga, but the anime is what really hammers home the fact that these two powerful sorcerers are also still kids. And shonen, especially shonen that are as blatantly dark as JJK, it's very easy to forget that the characters we are seeing go through trials and tribulations are just teenagers. The angst is still there for these two, and I'll talk about that later in the video. But equally important to showing off the tragedies of their friendship, Gege and especially the staff at MAPPA Studios showed off the positivity that they had with one another before everything went wrong. Even minor things like the opening and ending do a great job of demonstrating how normal these two were when you eliminate the fact that they were sorcerers. They ate out with their friends, they hung out outside of school, they played sports together, they argued, they fought, but above all else, they seemed to really enjoy themselves. The friendship between Suguru and Satoru feels almost nostalgic in a way if you are someone who is older than them, and if you are their age or younger, I imagine that the bond these two share feels very familiar. If you've had a best friend or really just a close companion at all, you've probably to some extent experienced what Gojo or Geto experienced. Their relationship just kind of feels cozy in the beginning stages of Hidden Inventory, which serves to be a fun experience on its own, and it also really sets you up for the tragedy that befalls them later in the arc. We'll get into what exactly I mean by that in a little bit, but first we need to talk about the themes and writing that went into both of these characters. Now, you could technically lump in their writing with their chemistry in a very roundabout way, but what I'm talking about right now goes deeper than simple on-screen back and forth. Rather than talking about what these characters say to each other, I'm addressing what both characters say about each other. In the beginning, Geto really functioned as somewhat of a compass for Gojo. In many moments throughout Hidden Inventory, you can see Gojo rely on his friend, not necessarily for strength, for power, for the ability to fight, but for a sense of morality and justice. Ghetto relies on Gojo as well. Even though Ghetto has the sense of rightness that Gojo lacks, Gojo has a level of confidence and steadfastness that I think Ghetto simply doesn't have, or at least not as much of it. They perfectly balance each other out, and together, they are the strongest. Gojo was certainly referring at least mainly to strength when he's commenting, but on a larger scale, it's obvious that Gege is commenting more so on just their power, but also on the way they complement each other perfectly on a personality and writing level. You can see the difference in ideals when they talk about what a sorcerer should be in the beginning of the arc, and as you'll notice, their ideas of what a sorcerer is supposed to do completely change. Initially, Gojo thinks that the strong existing to help the weak is stupid, and Ghetto, conversely, thinks that those with power should protect those without. 
Gojo's ego and sense of self is more dominant than Ghetto's, but his compassion, his empathy, his morality, all of that is complemented by Ghetto and his sense of what's right and wrong. Neither character at this point is wholly devoid of the other's trait, but they do trust each other to make up for what they lack, and that trust runs very deep. Ghetto trusts Gojo to keep his technique up for 72 hours straight, and even after Gojo's awakening, he looks to Ghetto for guidance when it comes to killing the people responsible for Amonai's death. Rather than make a decision in his apathy, rather than do something that would just be so simple for him, he looks towards the person closest to him. He looks to Ghetto for guidance and doesn't hesitate to listen to him when he says no. The problem is that Gojo's explosive growth led to him leaving Ghetto behind, and the perfect harmony that their friendship had was really broken after Toji's interference. You see, Gojo and Ghetto, by the end of Hidden Inventory, almost swap viewpoints. In the beginning, Gojo was all about himself and the strong having value and protecting the weak being pointless, very him-oriented, very sorcerer-oriented. Ghetto was all about justice. He was all about taking care of and nurturing those weaker than you. He was all about growth and protectiveness, and he thought that people in power had a responsibility to those who weren't. But that changed after Toji. That changed after Gojo's awakening. That changed after Ghetto saw two children being tortured just for being sorcerers, just for being strong. It's only once the two sorcerers lose each other that they fully develop what the other had. It's only once Ghetto is forced to be steadfast on his own, once he realizes that Gojo was not there to shoulder a lot of the burden for him anymore, that he becomes very self-centered, very selfish in his own words. And it's only once Ghetto defects and once he completely subverts the sense of morality that Gojo thought he had, that Gojo has to step up and have a moral compass that is internal. It's only once the two sorcerers lose each other other, that they fully develop what the other had. Ghetto's ascent into the curse that he's considered in Volume Zero came from him developing the sense of self, the ego that he lacked before. This ego overpowered his prior determination to be good, or rather, his selfishness warped what goodness was to him. Protecting the weak was no longer the moral thing to do. Rather, preserving the strong, the people that he cared about and had grown close to, was of the utmost importance. The cause of Suguru Ghetto changed the moment he felt he had lost Gojo as a friend, and the selfishness that Gojo had as a teen seemed to dissipate the moment that Ghetto walked out of his life. Instead, it was replaced by a sense of responsibility and maturity that he had never had before. Before. The loss of their friendship resulted in immediate growth for both characters. Some would say that Ghetto changed for the worse, and I would agree, but it was change all the same. Now I don't know if Gege did this on purpose, but the growing apart aspect of Gojo and Ghetto does seem somewhat realistic to how people grow in part in reality. One day, you and your best friend could have the perfect relationship. You could complement each other's weaknesses and strengths flawlessly, but it only takes one real misstep for things to completely mess up. It doesn't mean that there was no connection or that the relationship itself was fragile, but it speaks to the delicacy of human connections. The delicate balance of friendship that exists in adolescence due to circumstance and similarity can be easily torn apart once the circumstances change. When one person grows incongruently with another, a rift is formed. This rift causes the other person to change and warp uniquely from their friend, causing an even larger rift, and this cycle continues viciously until two people who were once the closest of friends can't remember the last time that they talked to each other. In Gojo and Ghetto's case, the consequences were far more dire than a simple lost friendship, but I do think that the tragedy of these two characters hits particularly hard for some, because to a lesser extent this is possible in reality, and Gege showed us just how strong the bond between these two was. The path of Gojo and Ghetto diverted, and the trajectory of their lives were forever changed by that divergence. It's certainly a little twisted, it's certainly a little dark, but a massive part of the appeal of Gojo and Ghetto is the tragedy that befell their relationship, not only because people like seeing tragedy no matter how much we like to deny it, but on top of that, the writing was just solid through and through. In Hidden Inventory, we get to see it all. The chemistry between the two before Toji, the warmth and nostalgic feeling that their connection evoked, and finally the dismantling of it all. All because Toji's actions affected them significantly differently. In about 15 chapters worth of content, Gege was able to thoroughly write a beautiful friendship that we hadn't gotten to see before, and Season 2 took this very strong framework and expanded on it to create something even better. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more JJK analysis content, subscribe and hit the bell. You can also find a massive playlist of Jujutsu Kaisen videos along with other anime and manga for you to watch at your own leisure. And if you want to see more duos discussed in a similar manner, let me know which characters you would like to see like this down in the comments. It doesn't have to be limited to Jujutsu Kaisen either, so long as I've seen the series, I'm down to do something like this. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.